What's going on guys? My name is Ron and welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how I hold my machine and how I'm able to pull consistent lines. Now it's no big secret. This is just how I hold my machine. It's going to kind of an unusual method. I believe I've seen Daniel Yuck hold this machine like this many, many moons ago. But I anyways, so I'm going to show you how I do this, um, I guess, non-traditional way I hold my machine. Uh, just so hopefully it can help you get the ball rolling because I know after I uh, cracked this right here holding the machine I was able to just hit the ground running and just start uh, progressing a lot faster so let's get going with it all right guys so um Today I'm using my uh, Discover device and M3. I just got this machine. It has a 4.5 millimeter stroke. I got this machine as good reviews, hoping that it can help me push bigger liners with ease. It's a direct drive machine. It cost me about 125 bucks with the battery. I've used it once or twice uh, a little bit uh, on my arm or my practice arm. Uh, right now I'm gonna kind of put it through its paces, but I figured we can uh, kill two birds with one stone. I can run this thing through its paces and I can show you guys how I line. So this is just how I line. It's not, doesn't mean it's the way to line. Of course, that's the beautiful thing about tattooing is it's, there's no 100% way to do it. But so if you're struggling with your lining, this is going to be a good video for you to watch. So anyways, so this is pretty much it right here. Sorry about the camera guys. Let me get back up here. So I'm pretty much just, you know, the, between the thumb and the index finger, right? So this is like your traditional way to let people line, right? Like this, right? Well, this is kind of how I do it and how I've been doing it, that's how I'm most comfortable doing it, is I will put my finger right here, just like this right here. And I'll kind of use, put my fingernail, like kind of like around the tube right here. And then I'll kind of just use my, kind of slide my finger along. And that's how I'm able to stay so you're kind of using your tip of your, your index finger as like your um, depth control. You know what I mean? If you want to go deeper, you, I can push with my thumb here and uh, so far, so forth and all that bullshit. So, um, all right. So another good thing to do, this is usually what I will do on um, when I'm actually tattooing clients is I will take a little bit of this shit here and I'll rub it on my glove. That way I have a nice right here. I have a nice, consistent, smooth slide. The skin is already pretty lubed up, so. Of course, <clears throat> you know, what goes hand in hand with consistent lining is, you know, finding your right voltage. So, typically I line at eight volts. That's what's comfortable for me. There is the throw on my needle. I like to hang it out there pretty far. So we're gonna do a quick dip. All right, so we're gonna run the edge here, right here, next to my, next to the rose here, and just. I hope you guys can see that. Oh yeah, you guys should be all right. Sorry about the shadow. This is the best way I can do this. And we're gonna be listening for. We're gonna be watching and listening at the same time. So what I'm gonna listen for is this sound. As soon as it makes this sound, we know it's doing. We know it's gonna be doing what it's supposed to do, right? So when I first started doing this, people were like, well, you, you kind of have to listen for it. I'm like, oh, that's crazy talk. But after being around a few times, you kind of understand what they're saying now. So what we're going to do, we're going to wait for our sound. Pull. Boom. There we go. Nice and straight. Just like that. Now, of course, you see what a lot of other guys do, and I have been kind of evolving the way I line too. Like when I get in a comfortable position, I will, you know, line like the traditional way, which is I'll see these guys do this one right here. So if we look here. We are, you know, nice and saturated, consistent black. 
and this is pretty much what you want right there guys so I thought this 10-9 would be big enough for my outside lines here but I think I'll probably just end up using them on my inside lines so let's just get that knocked out here Now it's always a good habit to uh, always be dipping, you know what I mean? If you want to get, if you want to do this little ghost run, I like to do that too, just to make sure I'm going to be in the most comfortable position. Possible. Now this is world famous blackout ink. I just... Uh, dynamic works just as good for me. I just love how black this ink looks when it uh, when it's on actual skin. It just I just love the way it looks. Now this um, this method does have a lot of drawbacks, which is um, it gets very messy right here on the tip of my finger, as you can see. It's very, very messy. And you are putting your finger really close to the danger zone. So just always be careful, watch what you're doing, and everything should work out just fine for you. Like I said, this is my go-to lining method. Bring that out just a little bit because that point is right here at the tip of this rose petal. So now I just got this rose off Pinterest. This I just uh, searched trad rose, and I um <laughs> I can't I can't talk and line at the same time. I just googled uh, or I looked up trad rose on. Pinterest. I took it to my iPad and stenciled it. This machine seems to be working pretty nice. It's consistent, smooth. Usually, uh, I don't like these cheaper batteries because they're just not as, as consistent and smooth as my critical. But right now, I'm, sh I'm lining with my Ava and I'm shading with my uh, Hawk Thunder. And it's just kind of been a pain uh, to um, unplug, you know, go back and forth. As far as like being like worried about like, you know, uh, contamination, germs and shit. So... I'm hoping I can use this battery for my Ava. I can line wirelessly and then I could uh, use my hard, uh, hard wire for my Hawk Thunder. Yeah, so we're just, we're finding our depth, listening for sound, listening for the sound. And then we're using our finger as our guide to float, right? And if you want to, you know, add, if you want to put more needle, you push, push near with your thumb, put a little pressure down on your wrist, and then you kind of just slide your whole hand. You want to lock your wrist or whatever, and, and then once you get better, you know, you can start doing these with your wrist and... Fun stuff. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I seen Daniel Yuck using this or a similar method. You know, 
watch out for that. Or a similar method. I uh, went home, tried it, and I'm just like, okay, boom, that, that's what works for me. So, awesome. Sweet. So, I'm going to line this out really quick. Um, probably use a quadrant 11, because that's the only 11 I have right now for these big pedals. And, um... So I switched up to a quadrant 11. This is just a long taper 11. And it's not a full membrane quadrant, but still does a great job. Quadrant 7 and 11s are pretty excellent. From what I was told, and this one is pretty, pretty good. So anyways, so um, like I said, guys, we're just, you know, we're going in, we're listening for the sound. This thing hits pretty hard. 4.5 stroke. I did think it was going to be quite a bit bigger. I'm like, okay. This is like maybe a bishop. Maybe a competitor. They're trying to make it look like a bishop machine with the big stroke and the way it's kind of shaped, I guess. But uh, yeah, 4.5 stroke. It's a big dog. Direct drive. Got it off Amazon for... At the Amazon. I got the machine and the battery for... Uh, I think 123 and at the end of our line we're just going to kind of pull out you know we're going to go in press 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 and we're going to kind of try to whip it out the best we can and that will help you uh it's going to help us join our lines now I'm going to flip this around just for the sake of this turning out the best way possible, but it's always best to, um, you know, practice in every position, you know what I mean? So, give it like this guy right here. So I'm going to come in behind right here. I'm going to come in behind our line. Let's see if we can, yep, yeah, that feels pretty comfortable. Come in behind our line, press about halfway through. without so so let's get this nice and slippery Give it a little dip so we're going to try to seamlessly join this line right here from up top here kind of a stretch at the bottom end of it but it'll be all right line weights the same and this thing hits pretty hard I'm pretty happy with it so far the, the night I got it, I busted out my uh, real skin arm and uh, just like quickly did some lines on this skeleton that's a, uh, or the scorpion that's been stenciled on it for like a month now. So after this one, guys, I 
I'm going to try to put something together. This is going to be kind of in between a cartridge video because I don't expect everyone to want to watch this just for my guys that are struggling with their line saturation. Um, like I said, I'm not like the God's gift to tattooing or God's gift to lining techniques or anything like that. It's just I feel like once I when I picked this up, I was able to hit the ground running and focus on other things uh, rather than you know how to get a consistent you know what's what I'm doing wrong to figure out why I'm not getting consistent lines. And so once you get uncomfortable, just pull it out, you know what I mean? And you can just come in behind here. Yep. And just remember guys, we're always going for progress, not perfection. Um, I've seen a great thing on the Tattooing 101 uh, newsletter and it was like showing how progress is not a straight line and that's so true you know what I mean uh, this time last year um, you know I was barely doing little scratches on people on you know stuff and I thought I was like man that looks pretty good <laughs> um, I, I found all my piles of skin too guys so we're uh, we're gonna go through those and uh, I just need to pile them up like in like order I suppose and that way we can um I can kind of show you how I progressed so um yes so I might just I might just shade this I'm gonna shade this out on camera of course I would do it live but I don't think I have enough people that would watch me live and also doing it live kind of makes me nervous so I just want you guys to be successful um, at, you know everything you guys do of course and be able to give people great tattoos and you know it really uh so it's just a great sense of fulfillment, you know what I mean? Uh, when, you know, people are getting up and they're, they just love it or, you know. And I'm not saying I do the best tattoos, but. Um, it's, you know, I am my number one critic and. It's always, you know, it's good to be hard on yourself, but never be, don't be too hard on yourself, you know what I mean? You still want to. It's always good to, uh, you know, strive for excellence and all that stuff, but it's just, at the end of the day, you just want to go home and, you know, feel good about what you've done, or once you shut all the lights off and you're getting ready for bed, you just feel good about what you've done, or, it's always important. Now, um, flowers are not like the easiest things to figure out where to put the shading, but I did bust one out on Procreate. I did shade this one on Procreate with a soft brush, with a soft airbrush, and it looks pretty good. So, um, I'm going to, that's how we're going to, we're going to shade that, uh, how I practice it on, um, Procreate and um, I'll also show you another way if you don't have an iPad another way that you can practice putting shading down But we'll get to that when we get to it So um I really been I've been working on my drawing pretty consistently the past um five six months, you know and I, you know, I'll show my wife, you know, what I've done and all this stuff and what I think about it. And she's always says, you know, you're too hard on yourself. It's uh, it's your art, and uh, who's who's anyone to tell you that your art isn't perfect? You know what I mean? 
and that's always resonated with me pretty well so I'm starting to talk here and get distracted and not doing the best I can here but it's all right so I missed a line right here when I was stenciling it and I'm pretty sure That's probably the best we're going to get it. I'm just going to wing it. And, you know, there's a million videos out there, guys. That's, you know, lining secrets and all this shit like that. But this is what's always worked best for me. So I really hope that uh, I have to get the Vaseline out. I really hope that this works for you guys. Another good way to clean these things off is with a alcohol wipe. Yeah, once I start getting comfortable, man, I just can start just busting these out. Even, uh, it's even, you know, when I tattoo, like, clients and stuff like that, I don't like to call them clients because I'm not doing this professionally. I'm just doing it 110% safely out of my home. For people that I know I can trust and um, want tattoos for me. I don't I don't ever go out there and beg anyone to let me tattoo them. You just keep doing what you do and the people will come, so trust me. So I let this stencil dry in here for about about a day and a half, I'd say. And um, yeah, comes out pretty smooth. I like to use that cheap Amazon stencil paper. It just works so much better on this skin. I mean, the perp, the spirit stuff I use for you know actual people. But um, this blue stuff, the blue crydaws or whatever the hell they call it, it just shows up so much darker. I can't see. I got too much ink in my tube here. It just shows up. I can't see a fucking thing. It shows up just so much better. It shows up so much better on this skin. Sometimes when you're using a bigger, bigger liner, it's a lot easier to push than it is to float it. So I actually got my, I ordered a, a, a roll of real skin this time, instead of that real skin seconds. Well, I did about two orders of real skin seconds, and that's pretty much uh, like three dozen palm sized tattoos. So I'm like, uh, well, probably smaller than palm size. Probably, you know, like, this is probably about as big as I'd get them, but. I like to have a little buffer here, and if I need space here on the side to, you know, warm up, I can do that too. But the purpose of this tattoo and a couple other ones I got here are so I can hang them on the wall, and if, you know, someone walks in here and, um, more than walking out, they can see this, and, you know, if they want to come back later and get it, they can, you know. And, um, yeah, you know, sure, this isn't my exact design, but the way I'm shading it, uh, the way I shaded it, this is, a you know, originally a traditional rose that looks pretty damn good. I'll put a pop in of it, but I just stenciled that specific rose, and 
I'm just going to shade it uh, with my um, with my selection of gray washes. Probably just a uh, shoot. Yeah, so that's the thing about this way you we tattoo you guys. It does get very messy. Like that, so. But in it, oh, so you get this crumbly shit here. So just make sure you keep whoever you're tattooing clean and you should be fine. Hasn't let me down yet, so. Yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm grateful for people like um, you know Dave from Art Something. He's a he's a pretty great guy. Um, you know, starting out whatever he was doing, and you know, taking his time to teach people. I don't know if that was the kindness of his heart, or he's out there to just grab that money. But I'm pretty sure it's the first one. I need to watch that video he released about his shops. Hopefully. Be sad to hear if his shop closed down. He's a really great dude. So, pretty much, all right, so, pretty much just have our uh, stems here down the middle of these petals, which I'll probably use a five. Probably use a five for so or a five to achieve what I'm looking for. So Let me grab that wipe real quick and I'll show you guys what I mean. So, yeah. Instant hand sanitizing wipe. Just pretty much just straight alcohol here, guys. Yeah, these things are badass. shit on my glove here too so boy the quality of this skin compared to the real skin seconds is fucking next level what's over here oh my mic's not on okay i'm gonna grab my five real quick and then we'll finish up Quail five, great fives, guys. Great threes. These are my number. These are my go-to five and threes. Um, it's going to, uh, you know, these have been there for me forever. It's another Daniel Yuck thing. You check these out way back in the day, but all right, so. All right, so we got a smaller liner here, so we're gonna go ahead and just take it down to like seven two. That way, we're not fucking doing some surgical fucking procedure here and slicing shit open. So, and the 
brightness up a little bit. So another bad thing about this method is if um you know you're clenching too tight and you're pushing too hard on your uh, in your cap here, which is something that I used to do, but once I realized I was doing it, I was able to knock it off. But if you're running a real soft hitting machine and you're pushing here, it could bog your machine down to where it's not going to be uh, lining as consistent as you want it to be, you know? So it's just something to watch out for. It's e incredibly easy to do, especially if you're like me and you jump in the fucking stool and you have had like two Red Bulls and you're ready to fucking knock out some tattoos and shit like that. I've, um, I like, uh, I like putting a piece of skin down below. when I'm tattooing, it kind of just gives it a little bit more forgiveness. So we're gonna... There we go. Yeah, I was worried about this line and this line, you know, looking like it ran into each other, but it turned out okay. Another thing too, but don't want to hang your needle out too far because then you're going to start poking people. But yeah, guys, so you just want to be careful when you do it this way with your finger because, especially like me myself, I've gotten in a hurry a few times and I've gotten very close to um, grabbing it this way or getting close to you know poking myself in the hand, which. Um, is a big, big scary thing to watch out for. I've never had a breakthrough glove. Which is another reason why I like these latex gloves or, you know, preferred for anything serious like examinations and shit. But if you are using latex gloves, just be sure to ask whoever you're tattooing if they're allergic to latex and anything like that. There we go, a little shaky, but... Honestly, about down to a 5 is about as most comfortable as I'm working with at this moment, because... Anything below that, you can start to see kind of the shake. Another thing I'd recommend too is once you get comfortable uh, lining like this, um, buy an arm, buy a, buy a real skin arm or something, you know, anything that's going to like simulate the curvature of somebody's arm and start and wrap this, wrap whatever your, your uh, wrap your piece of skin around that arm and that will help you like simulate the, the, uh, curvature, you know, but that's pretty, probably pretty common knowledge by now. That's generally what I would be doing right now, but I wanted to make sure this thing came out as clean as possible just so I could show you guys. But yeah, this is a good, uh, good, you know, way to good technique to like get your get you uh, get the ball rolling for you. But I would definitely recommend um, 
you know, once you figure out the sound and, you know, your hand speed and voltage and all that shit, that uh, you try to start working your way back to like a more traditional way to hold the machine. Just because this, this way, this method is not 100% bulletproof and I just know it's worked for me so far and, and I just know how uh, good it felt that once I figured out how to get consistent one pass lines that I could start practicing other things. Boom, there she is. No, I have no idea where the vas my Vaseline's at, so let's probably grab a fresh, fresh paper towel here. God damn, 25 minutes. That's a long fucking video. This is just the Inkies bubble gum. I don't like to use this shit on actual people because it's too fucking shiny. You can't see what the fuck you're doing. Pardon my French. Well, boom, guys. There it is. Looking pretty sharp. So yeah. Discover device and M3 works pretty good, man. It's hard hits pretty hard, man. And when I when I put it in there, it doesn't feel like it's gonna bog down or anything, so. Also, this battery has a jump start. Put it next to the microphone here. Yeah, man, Discover makes pretty good shit. All right, so, um, yeah, that's how I do that, guys. I really hope that this will help somebody or help you. Um, next, we're going to do a lining, or not a lining, a shading, shading tutorial, and um, not a tutorial, I guess, how I go through how to put down the shade, how I learn to put down the where to put the shade at specifically so anyways awesome guys thank you guys for watching love you guys uh, if you have any questions let me know if this works for you cool if it doesn't no big deal um yeah all right peace god bless